Bulletin Board maintained in the municipal yes. building for public announcements. Would you please all rise and join us in a salute to the flag? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag to the of the United, United, United States, States of America, America. America. To the Republic of America. To the Republic of America. One nation, one nation, which is stands God, under God, indivisible, for liberty, for liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Would the secretary please call the roll? Yes. Mr. Bon Giovanni. Here. Mr. Dellarina. Mr. Duncan. Mr. Gaffney. Yes. Ms. Croft. Yeah. Mr. Ray. Mr. Rossi. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Tappan. Here. Mr. Taylor. Here. Councilman Schindler. Here. Mayor Francis. Here. Mr. Gilbert. Here. We have minutes of the May 3rd, 2022 meeting. The minutes were distributed electronically. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion for approval. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Bon Giovanni? Yes. Mr. Gaffney? Yes. Mrs. Croc? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Tappan? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Councilman Schindler? Yes. Mayor Francis? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes. By the way, we have Mr. Dan Honoshevsky tonight in replace for Mr. Uh, who's he replacing? <laughs> John Rusky. Rusky, Rusky. right. <laughs> yeah. God, how quickly for we forget. Oh, Jeez. well. He's a forgettable. <laughs> okay. It, it, it doesn't get any better, Alan. It doesn't uh, get any better. We'll start with new applications tonight. Wow. Michael I won't tell him. I won't. Daryl O'Connell, block 31101, lot 51201 <laughs> Maxim. The applicants would like to expand the existing deck. Variances being requested. Uh, is Mr. Pellicone and Ms. Ms. O'Connell here tonight? Are you here? Yes. Can you see us? Oh, there they are. Okay. Uh, you want to raise your right hands and be sworn in by our attorney, please. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And are you the property owners? Yes. Is there anybody else who will be testifying on your behalf? Yes. We can't hear you. Hi, Joe. Joseph Gates. Mr. Uh, Gates. Oh. Oh, okay, Joe, you want to raise your right hand and be sworn in by Mr. Haggerty? Yes. Where the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And Mr. Gates, you're currently licensed in New Jersey as an architect? That is correct, since 1992. And you've uh, testified before this board on many occasions, isn't that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, either Mr. P uh, Pellicone or Ms. O'Connell, you want to get it started? Okay, we can't hear you, Ms. O'Connell. I don't think you're muted, but we we just don't hear you. No. <clears throat> hmm. You need to increase your mic or something, Ms. O'Connell. We can't hear you. Ms. O'Connell, perhaps Mr. Gates can take over. He prepared yeah. the plans and he probably can explain it very well for the board. Okay, right. Mr. Gates, please. Yes. <laughs> that would be fine. As you said, I believe there's something, perhaps a setting with a microphone volume that maybe needs to be yeah. increased from them. But nevertheless, Michael Policion and Cheryl O'Connor have owned the house for quite a while. The deck is existing. And one of their concerns with the deck is that it's too small to fit a table 
so that they could all dine together out on the deck. If you notice the existing deck, it's a long skinny deck and the, there's a dotted line on the, if you look at the upper left draw on the deck plan, yep. there's a dotted line that shows the existing deck and there's a dimension that shows six feet for the existing dimension. And as you might imagine, it's a little tough unless you had a one foot wide table for anybody to be able to sit around the table and dine together. So that is what initiates the, the personal issue with the, with the existing deck itself. If I can back up for the moment, the reason that they are here tonight is there is a variance required for construction within 50 feet of the lake. Right. Although this is an existing non-conforming condition, it is being further reduced by the addition of the deck. Right. So that is the new well, variance. And you will notice that is referenced in the zoning analysis in the upper right corner yes. of the drawing, the architectural drawing. The plan that everybody should have in front of them has its sheet A1. It's the original dated 12-14-21. It was revised on 2-15-22. We added the well location, which is in the front yard, nowhere near the deck. And then last week, just for clarification, we did have a typo in Cheryl's last name. So regrettably, I found that at the last moment, corrected that. And that's the only reason there was a newer revision number two date of 5-4-22. The design of the deck has not changed. Okay. So uh, the existing non-conforming conditions, as the board is very familiar with, is with regard to the undersized lot. And just the fact that it would be an undersized and the narrow shape, whereas 120 foot wide is required and there's only 59.84 in the width. The depth itself isn't the issue, but again, the rear guard setback of the structure on the deck are also called out existing non-conforming. Uh, uh, Mr. Rushke's technical review. Yes, sir. Uh, he indicates really just one thing that uh, the applicant should submit a copy of the noted survey of the subject property prepared by the owner. Uh, I believe we have that as a separate sheet. That's correct. I believe what happened because in our file, the original survey, if it's folded on the bottom to fit in an eight and a half by 11, it cuts off the title block. Yes. So when I looked back and noticed that again, two weeks ago, we said, let's go ahead and let's unfold and make sure that we submitted the 13 copies. And I believe that was the only issue with the survey. The survey is the same one that you already had. That right. you had the it, office the, already the had. only other things the technical review says is uh, you have to, uh, you're got to worry about the rule permit by rule and because it's so close to the lake we should see on the drawings uh, that the silt fence uh, possibly bales are going to be used uh, during construction we certainly have no objection to those comments and again i speak on behalf of the applicants here the item number one of his technical review, as you correctly indicated, is permit by rule number 16 for construction of a deck. Right. And as you are aware, we have done a couple of those. They've actually simplified that process with the state of New Jersey from a couple of years ago. So we can certainly amend our plan to reference that note on the drawings. Right. And by all means, we do agree. We have no objection to putting whether either silt fence or hay bales during construction to prevent sediment from going down the hill. And I don't believe that Mr. Policione or Ms. O'Connell have any objection to doing those two. Again, if I could speak on their behalf, but they are certainly appropriate considerations for this matter. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pelicione or Ms. O'Connell, do you have anything to add or any questions that you want to ask us? Wait. Uh -oh. Oh. Oh, we don't hear you again. I heard you for a second when you first started. Cheryl, do you want to call me real quick and convey your, your point? If you can give us about 10 seconds, she's going to call the office line sure. here as backup. Okay. Mr. Gates, 
Oh, one second. Uh, one second. No, that's okay. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, is, is the lot steeply sloped down toward the lake? It's not significantly sloped like a couple of the other applications that we've had. Okay. From a Hopacon well, standard, the, yeah. the lake portion is relatively level. Okay, and this would be in keeping with uh, improved properties, lakefront in the area? Yes, that is correct. Okay, very good. That's correct. This, this small addition of the deck does not create any, any detriment to any adjacent neighbors or anyone in the neighborhood. Cheryl, okay. you had a question? That's okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and you want to continue to protect that. Okay. Okay, very good. Anything else I need to convey? Okay, great. I'm going to hang up and convey. Thank you. All right, Mr. Gates. Uh, I apologize about that. Again, they just okay. wanted to remind us also that they did have proper permits. They had done some septic repairs in the backyard at the lake area. And this is, you'll see on the drawings, it's a couple of feet away from the deck. Yep. And they did have permits on that. So certainly they're in agreement and it's in their best interest to make sure that they prevent any, mm -hmm. any debris or any materials from construction bothering their own septic or yard or getting into the lake. So they're in, in agreement with those requests from right. Mr. Rushdie. And I believe that any any uh, posts have to be 10 feet from the septic. Is that what it is? The, uh, we, that we have addressed with the structural engineer. And typically if it's posts without foundations, they can get close. So the bigger concern is when it's a full foundation wall as opposed to an individual sonitude footing. Mm. Okay. And again, typically in a, so long as I don't go step out of turn, I believe I did see Mr. Cariaga's name perhaps on one of the attendees here. And we will certainly confirm that in as much as he does a lot of the septic coordination with our office. We'll make sure that we don't do anything incorrectly here. Okay, good. All right, let's open this. Uh, well, let's see if anybody from the board has any questions first. Any questions or comments from the board? There is the Lake Commission. Okay, let's open it. The Lake Commission sends a letter, but unless they send a representative to our meetings, we don't even look at the letter uh, because it's just hearsay. The, the so, reason, uh, believe the reason being is, is the deck condition is, if you want to say, rather innocuous. They don't have any concerns that is not presenting any detrimental concerns, right. other but than I'm making going sure to there's open no this up to the public. Uh, would anybody from the public like to comment or question this application? If so, please go to the bottom of your screen and in reactions, raise your hand. Ron and I will will check the screens and see if anybody is raising a hand. I don't see anybody, Ron, do you? No, sir. Okay, then I'll bring it back to the board. What is the pleasure of the board? I'll make a motion to approve the variance, Mr. Chairman. I'll uh, second it. <clears throat> motion and a second? <clears throat> yes. I'll second it. Okay. Mr. Bongiovanni? Yes. Mr. Gaffney? Yes. Mr. Crock? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Tappan? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Councilman Schindler? Yes. Mayor Francis? Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Mr. Gilbert, okay. I'm going yes. to assume that the, they, they are going to ask that the uh, memorialization be waived since they're talking about a deck. They probably want to have it done for the summer. So uh, I'll be a little out of turn and make that request to the board okay. on their behalf. I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Who was the Mayor second Prince on that one? Made the motion. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Bongiovanni? Yes. Mr. Gaffney? Yes. Mrs. Crock? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Tappan? Yes. Mr. Taylor? 
Yes. Councilman Schindler? Yes. Mayor Francis? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Pellicchione and Ms. O'Connell. You have our permission. Uh, you have our waiver of memorialization. You can go down to the uh, land use or the uh, construction department tomorrow and get permits. Uh, remember that there is, what, a 45-day uh, appeal period uh, but, from uh, the date of memorialization. Yeah, but I uh, don't there's think there's nobody participated like tonight. The likelihood of somebody appealing is like me winning the lottery, probably. So, right. <laughs> Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, come thank to the board. You. Thank you very much. And Mr. Gates, thank you also. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Okay, you too. Now we'll get to the continued applications. Matthew and Renee Wood, Block 30408, Lot 5, 261 Lakeside Boulevard. Mr. The Chairman, I will recuse myself of this. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I will recuse also. Okay, the mayor and Mr. Schindler have both uh, recused themselves because this is a use variance. They would like to rebuild an existing two-story boathouse with a five-foot extension and a four-foot balcony. And there are variances. Uh, Mr. Uh, is, are the woods here tonight? I am, yes. Okay. Uh, Samantha Wood. And well, actually, Renee, sorry, my daughter has uh, yep. jacked my laptop. <laughs> okay. so, but I'm Renee. <laughs> so that's Renee Wood. <laughs> yes. uh, and Mr. Cariega, you're hey, here is. as well. <laughs> Who else yes, is going correct. to be representing you, Ms. Wood? Anybody? Uh, Mr. Cariega. Okay, just Mr. Cariega. And oh, Mr. Okay. Burn. Chairman Burn Heffley, uh, attorney up for the applicant. Okay. Oh. Okay. Or Byrne doesn't have to be sworn in. Samantha or uh, <laughs> Renee and uh, Jeff. Yeah. Sworn in. They're, they're actually still sworn from the last time, but let's get them sworn in again, Bill. Please raise your right hand, Renee and Mr. Carriega. You swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth? I do. Okay. Okay, okay. thank you, Mr. Chairman. So again, this is this is, yes, the continuing application for 261 Lakeside. Two-story boathouse that's uh, in a state of disrepair that we appeared at the April meeting for and uh, presented our um, proposals for the rehabilitation of the boathouse. Um, and uh, we're essentially proposing to replace that structure. Um, we listened to the board comments at the last meeting and the concerns that the uh, board had with regard to the application and uh, we uh, addressed those concerns in terms of uh, revised submission that was put in uh, May 3rd. And um, so you do have revised plans uh, with regard to the changes that the board was uh, to some extent looking for. And uh, specifically, we have removed one of the docks. The dock was a concern. The number of slips was a, re was a concern also, so that reduced the number of slips. Um, we also expanded one of the docks from two feet to four feet, which was a, a request by one of the board members. And also notably in terms of the scope of the boathouse itself, we did reduce the height of the boathouse to, to its existing height and no longer uh, would like any additional variance in terms of height. So I think all of this sort of addresses the scope concerns that the board had with regard to the application. That's sort of generally where we left it. Again, those modifications have been made. We've got Jeff Cariega here uh, who testified last time around, and, and uh, I think he's ready to specifically um, go over those changes with the board. Okay, I, I have a question first. In terms of the docks, uh, I still see uh, five slips. Is that correct, or do you have you reduced it to only four? We no, reduced sir. it to four, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I think uh, we'll get we'll get to that specifically with Mr. Cariega. But we okay, have, uh, we're, proposing, we're proposing for four slips at this point. Right. Well, yeah, five slips makes it a, a, a marina by definition. So I just want to make sure of that. Yeah, so, that's why we specifically removed one of the docks, one of the three right. docks. And that was, uh, you know, that was one of the concerns. Uh, and uh, I mean, <laughs> it's a big change in terms of the dock, but uh, you know, the board had concerns with regard to that. We are removing one of those fingers 
And as a result of that, the, the dock itself does get substantially smaller and it only fits four boats at this point. So, and I think Jeff's gonna be able to address that specifically. Okay, Let, well, let's get on to Jeff. I, I can always get back to this. Yep. Jeff? Yes, okay. So uh, with the removal of the dock, uh, I, I believe there's only four spaces, one on each side of the boathouse, one to the side of the new four foot wide dock instead of two foot wide dock and one in the back. So there, there really is uh, only over four spaces. And what about the boathouse itself? Oh yeah, that's what I meant, it, it, the boathouse itself. Well, but, but now Jeff, the, if you look at the uh, existing docks. Yeah. Uh, you got one to the left, you got one to the right of the boathouse. Yeah. Then another one out to the right. Right. And then if you go back toward the, uh, toward the, uh, well, where it says proposed silt fence, isn't there a boat dock there too? I guess theoretically there would be, if, unless that, uh, that T was shortened out a little bit. Well, I mean, when I was over there last time, I didn't didn't get over there again. But when I was over there last time, I believe there was a boat docked there. So that would still create five rather than well, previously it was six. Now there's still five spots. So we've removed the the uh, the part of the T that extends past that dock on the right that would eliminate that spot, correct? Yes. Uh, who said yes? I did. Haggerty. Haggerty. If, if they, yeah, if they if they take that section, which really doesn't make much sense now that extends out to where the dock right. is to be moved, then I think that takes care of it. And Renee, is that okay with you? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having a, so are we talking about the, the finger that we, that we removed right. and then there's, so there's the space for the, there's the finger, that, the finger removed. that is the it, piece that, sorry, go ahead. The piece that connects to that finger that we're removing, that's the piece we're talking about taking out. And so it goes out a little further. Correct. Yeah. About 10 feet, right. Got it. And is it because the boathouse counts as a slip? Is that yes, the conclusion? Correct. Yes. So inside the boathouse also counts. That's correct. correct. Hmm. Um, how, how I would, if, if that was a condition of approval, then that would definitely be something that we would, well, that we would be, be willing to do. It's got to be a condition of approval because if you have, if you have five slips, then that qualifies as a marina. Correct, yes, sir. So my question would be the left-hand side um, yeah. of the boat, sorry, if you're facing the boathouse from the water, yeah. the left-hand side is our yeah. swimming area. We do not, I know that there's a dock there. I, I understand that there's a dock there. We do not um, park boats there. Would it be possible to deed restrict that to a swimming area? Would so that be a let's ask Mr. Haggerty? I would prefer that, but if that's not an option, then I then of course we would we would have no other choice. Do you know yeah. how deep the water I mean, is I there? I understand you're wanting to uh, to dock a boat uh, on the back of that section that we're talking about uh, taking out. So, Bill. Could we could they deed restrict the left side of the boathouse as we're looking at the plans to be a swimming area, not a dock? I think we could do that. I don't I don't see a reason not to. Okay. In that in that case, there's no need to uh, to reduce the that section that comes out where the dock is going to be removed, and you could still uh, dock a boat back there. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Back to Jeff. <laughs> Okay, so um, uh, let's see the uh, that dock that uh, that is being uh, removed. That was the one that was over fifty one or fifty feet long. So we are eliminating that uh, the variance for the over fifty feet. Right. Uh, the water area coverage uh, with the uh, reduction of the size of uh, uh, of the dock. We had twenty three point seven before. We are reduced down to twenty point nine. So where the existing conditions. Uh, so we are reducing below the existing conditions on that. Right. 
uh, uh, the size of the irregular shaped dock, 50 foot max, we still have the 169 foot existing and 144 foot proposed uh, variance. The minimum dock width, four foot required, uh, where it was two foot existing, we are proposing to uh, modify that two foot width to four feet to, so that uh, variance is eliminated. Uh, we still have all of the existing uh, uh, pre-existing non-conformity, so there's really no change in regard to that. Okay. Uh, in regard to the uh, technical review, uh, we had a, we added note number fourteen added to the uh, to the plans that the project does meet uh, the conditions for a uh, permit by rule Bye. Uh, number seventeen, which is construction of a dock. Right. Okay. Uh, we have shown some additional grade elevations uh, in question. Uh, that was uh, one of um, uh, the comments from Mr. Rushkey, and uh, I think the, uh, those are on the plan now, and I don't know if there's any other questions with regard to that from, uh, uh, from Dan. I don't know if there's any questions for you, Dan, on that. Uh, only question would be, are you proposing to do any removal of the walls temporarily and replacement for the purpose no. of access? No, not really, no. Um, or the bridge to the second yeah. floor? Yeah, I have people who want to go out. People want to mute. Uh, everybody, please mute yourself unless you're talking. Thank you. No, Sorry, Dan, I kind of lost you on the, the, with all that noise there. That's okay. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, uh, just the second question was, with the bridge, there's a bridge, I believe, from the top of the wall to the second floor Correct. of the replacement boathouse. Would that bridge also need to be any modifications or replacement as part of the project? It is well, being yes. repaired. Okay. And just the, the details would be worked out with the construction officer, you know, if, if this would to move forward before construction would be, you know, a condition. That's fine. Okay. Great. Thanks. Right. Anybody else from the board? Does anybody from the board have comments, questions, or anything at all? Mr. Carriega, could you email to me? Uh, Mr. Hack, you're reading off a sheet there of the changes that you made. Uh, could you email that to me with the, with the changes so that yes, I have I, a I think it was all on a cover letter that we resubmitted. Okay, so that's uh, in your cover letter? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was pretty much reading off the cover letter. Okay, very good. Thank you. Ron, did you have something? I had so a question for Mr. Haggerty. We talk about the definition of a marina, and that's five boats being moored. Is that something that has a time limit to it? I mean, I understand having slips and being able to put a boat in and moor it, but having open dock area and calling that the ability to mourn a boat is is are we tying that into the marina uh definition as well or is that you know i have four slips i have four slips for my boats but i have two people come visit and want to dock and they're going to leave is that how do we connect that to a marina definition well let's look at the marina definition i think that's what we have to go to let's see section let's see. I don't know whether it's in the standard definition section or not. Let's just see. Yes. Is it, is it let's just see. Yeah, just any public, semi-public or private facility capable of berthing or mooring five or more boats. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a capable of that, it could be considered a marina. So if you had very long docks, you could uh, be classified as a marina. Uh, you know, I, I, there's no marina police coming around to measure your docks, frankly, but, but uh, when we've got applications before the board, we have to consider that and factor that in. Right. And, and what we've done tonight is appropriate. I get it. I just want to find out what the hey, line of the saying is about yeah. mooring versus periodic docking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say what is mooring, and I think if somebody comes to visit you, it's it's probably fine. It's like how many parking spaces do you need at your house? Somebody comes to visit you, you're not saying well. <laughs> right, exactly. Home. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, as, as long as we, as long as we deed restrict this so that uh, mm-hmm. so that it's a swimming area, not a docking space, uh, and that deed stays. Uh, I mean, if they sell the place, it stays with it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So that, that that's important, I think. Okay, uh, anything else from the board? If not, I will open it to the public. If anybody from the public would like to comment or question this application, anything at all, please go to the bottom of your screen and in reactions, raise your hand. Mr. Tappan and I will check the screen and see if anybody's hand is raised. I don't see anybody, do you, Ron? Okay, then I will bring it back to the board. What is the pleasure of the board? I'll make a motion to approve it. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Mr. Giovanni? Yes. Mr. Gaffney? Yes. Mrs. Crock? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Mr. Smith? You're on mute, Mike. Mike, you're on mute, Mike. Yes. Mr. Tappan? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Uh, and okay, let's move along then. Let's move on to Elite Prepar- Preparatory Academy, Block 30612. Lot one and block 30706, lots one and two, 452 Lakeside Boulevard. Now, this application has been changed considerably. Uh, Previously, it was just an application. Now, uh, they want to get into other stuff as well. Uh, Bill, you had uh, some conversations with Mr. Heffley today. You want to uh, you want to start? I did. That's right. I, I did, Mr. Chairman, and I had the opportunity to review the statutes and the uh, ordinances. And this is in the R1 zone and a permitted use in the R1 zone under 242-38A, numeral two. It includes such municipal buildings, parks, playgrounds, or other municipal facilities as are deemed necessary and appropriate by the governing body. And the question I had is, well, is, is a school a municipal facility? And I think arguably it would be. And certainly it was uh, deemed necessary and appropriate by the governing body. So I think the, the Maxim School, Hudson Maxim School, is really a, a permitted use uh, of that, that property under our, our zoning ordinance. And then in the municipal land use law, just to make it as hard to find as they could uh, under miscellaneous provisions relative to zoning. Uh, there's a prov- and that's under 40 colon 55 D 66 subsection B. It says no zoning ordinance governing the use of land uh, by or for schools shall be uh, shall by any of its provisions or by any regulation adopted in accordance therewith discriminate between public and private nonprofit day schools of elementary or high school grade accredited by the State Department of Education. My understanding is that the school itself, the elite prep, would be nonprofit and that it would be accredited by the State Department of Education. Mr. Heffley will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, And if that's the case, well, we've got a permitted use uh, of the school, the Hudson Maxim School, and we can't discriminate against a private uh, uh, nonprofit school accredited by the State Department of Education. And therefore we'd have a permitted use application here uh, if the board so agrees, in which case we don't have to have any testimony in regard to pre-existing non-conforming use because it's conforming. And we don't need any testimony in regard to a use variance because it's permitted. So if the board agrees with that, then that's how we would go. And obviously then all the uh, board members could participate. Okay, I I have a couple of questions first. Uh, On the paper that we we got from Mr. Heffley, uh, the letter 
May 3rd, 2022. The attachments exhibit A and everything beyond that uh, is cut off. I mean, I, I can't read them. Uh, Mr. Heffley, do you have copies that uh, are legible? I mean, what happened is uh, apparently these extend beyond the uh, copy machine on the right sure. side. So, Mr. Chairman, the reason that I submitted those, there was some question. What you actually have is these are the, the deeds, obviously. There was some question as to the ownership of the property versus the applicant. And the only reason I attached this is so that the board could see uh, who the Board of Education deeded the property to. And that's Princeton Management Group. And that's you know uh, abundantly legible there. So I just wanted the board to have some evidence to the fact what, what's cut off at the bottom is really not relevant. What's relevant is I wanted the board to understand that the title that was conveyed went to Princeton Management Group, Inc. Uh, and that they are the property owners and that Elite Prep is the actual uh, operator uh, of the school. And the Elite Prep uh, operator and applicant, as, as Mr. Haggerty said, is a nonprofit uh, accredited institution. So I can confirm that. And the uh, Princeton Management Group is actually a regular uh, C corporation. It's a for-profit corporation. They own the property. They pay the property taxes. But Elite Prep itself, the applicant, uh, is a nonprofit. Uh, and uh, that uh, complies under that statute. So that's that's what we have there. Now, are there copies of these deeds? Yes, and I can most certainly give them to you. Okay. Longer ones that have everything on it. But the, again, I would, I, I, I think Mr. Haggerty, if you have a copy of it there, you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I have it. I, I'm satisfied that the, the applicant has demonstrated the title is, uh, is held by a, a different entity, which is fine. You can have a nonprofit rent from a uh, for-profit facility it's it's rather common um, that the nonprofit doesn't own the real estate so there's nothing wrong with that what we're interested in is the school operator elite prep and its status the test of the uh, presentation is that elite prep is nonprofit and uh, the school would be accredited okay accredited by whom is the uh, state board of education uh, mr chairman and uh, we testified to that last time around, and we can most certainly provide you with that accreditation. But the uh, applicant did testify to that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I checked with the State Board of Education. I couldn't find anybody who who agrees that they uh, accredit school private schools. Uh, um, okay. I have another question. The the local <laughs> board of education abandoned this school abandoned the use a while, about a year ago, year and a half ago. Uh, does that have any bearing on this at all? No, I don't believe so. I don't think it would be any different than any other type of application just because it's a school. Uh, I think I alluded to a, a case and that maybe Mr. Heffley did as well with this stable. And I think that stable was discontinued for more than a decade, but right. they'd never Removed the, they'd never removed the stalls. So the, the court held, well, there was no intent to abandon it. The classrooms weren't changed. They're still there. The building wasn't converted to a permitted use. So it, it sat idle, in it, but uh, it certainly wasn't converted from the prior use in terms of Thank you. architecture. That. Okay, then in that case, uh, Mr. Francis and Mr. Schindler, uh, do you agree that this is not a use variance and you do not have to recuse yourselves? No, no, I don't. Oh. I, I believe I, I'm still a little conflicted. It, it is not a municipal use, although it's inherently beneficial as a school and as a use. It's very high on the actually it's about as high as you go on inherently beneficial if you want to if you want to scale to that. But I, mm. I'm, I'm still I still think we should proceed cautiously to protect the applicant, actually, uh, I, I still think that it's, uh, and I've read the case law with parochial schools and, and uh, as a matter of fact, some daycare centers. Uh, I, I don't accept that it's a municipal uh, use, but it is a, like I said, it is inherently beneficial and I would support that. 
but I think that I, I, I'm going to recuse myself as a matter of caution because I'm not sure. I okay. think we should proceed. Yeah, yeah. Mayor, Mayor what, I'm not saying that the proposed use would be a municipal use. I'm saying that the Hudson Maxim School itself, I, I believe, arguably would be a municipal facility. That's there's no definition in the land use law or in the ordinance or in the treatise on definitions for municipal uh, land use type applications of what a municipal facility is. But I think a public school would arguably be a municipal facility. So the question is, what was the Hudson Maxim school? Not, not what is the elite prep school? So that, that's where I'm coming from yeah, on that. Yeah, I, I get that, but still I, I am hesitant to, to uh, go with that. Uh, I, I think I'm going to err on the side of caution because I'm not sure, and I would okay. I would want I would not want someone to challenge us or 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 the legal opinion and then get hung up and have to do it all over again. I, I'm going to recuse on uh, on on the basis of just being careful because I'm not sure, and if I'm not sure, I'd rather recuse and not hold it up later. I, I appreciate that, but then it would be jump in for one second on this just uh, because I, I think that uh, <laughs> the mayor I just want to get get this proper because he I, I think that the mayor may be uh, concerned that he has to uh, vote and make the decision on whether a use variance applies or not I don't think that's the question the existing board with this application as it exists right now probably has to make that decision whether the use variance applies or not and then the mayor can either recuse himself or not for whatever reasons he deems appropriate. I, I think that's correct. Um, but I yeah. think mm. the first the decision has to get made. Yeah, if but, I'm not sure, I, if I'm not sure, I'm not confident, then I'll recuse myself. So mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna recuse on this as a matter of caution. Thank you very much, Mr. Francis. And Mr. Schindler, you're, you're muted. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, my opinion is I actually think that the use has been abandoned. It's been over two years, Bill. But um, to caution, error on caution, I'm going to recuse myself also. Um, so, all right. So, okay. so the, threshold issue, the threshold issue for the board then is uh, does the board deem, <laughs> and I don't know that I'm going to get any case law on this, but uh, that the Hudson Maxim School would have been a municipal facility. And uh, if, if that is the case, then the Hudson Maxim School would be deemed to have been a permitted use. If, this, if the board feels otherwise, well, then it would not be. Okay, let's have some discussion about it. What is What do the members of the board think of this? Uh, I, don't, I don't understand how a, a school becomes a municipal operation we have nothing to do with their budget we don't have to do anything to do with their processes or anything else uh other than having a few shared service agreements with the board of ed i don't know how this becomes a municipal operation i'm, I'm sorry to be absent of the law definition but boy i i we are polar opposite of how I run my budget versus the, the way the school runs their budget. I can tell you that. If the, if the board is of that temperament, certainly uh, then we would treat the Hudson Maxim School as a uh, pre-existing non-conforming use. I think that's clear. I think anybody that's on the board that, that's lived the, the PACCOM for a while can almost take a judicial notice of that that's pre-existing non-conforming. Uh, and uh, then the next phase uh, after that is uh, uh, is is a private school consistent uh, with that pre-existing non-conforming use, and uh, in my view, it's sort of like a public or private hospital. It's it's a school, you know. It's school is a school. It's still it's a, school. a school. It's still a school. So I think uh, you know it. Uh, <laughs> okay. The use, the use would be consistent with. The well, yeah, have, having been on the Board of Education for many years, I've got to agree with Mr. Tappan. Uh, however, I also <laughs> agree with Mr. Haggerty that uh, it's a pre-existing non-conforming use. And yep. uh, so we, what we need to do is consider whether or not uh, converting it to a private school is a continuation of this use. Right. 
and and then the next then the and then if the board determines that which i think it will uh, the question then becomes is this an expansion of that use and mr heffley's presentation will be in fact it is a lesser use than uh in terms of student enrollment and just the use right. of the facility. <laughs> okay all right so what what uh members of the board uh what do you think i will tell you myself personally i'm not familiar enough with the law to have a very thoughtful uh, approach to this um, I'm not quite sure what it is that we are really looking to ascertain here. Hey, Bill, do you want to? Oh yeah, I, I think I think uh, with uh, Mayor Francis' statement and certainly Ron Tappan's statement and certainly uh, Board Chair's statements, I think, think you know uh, uh, it would be appropriate to say that the school, different <laughs> budget, different governance, different regulations, uh, it, is not a municipal facility such as a municipal building, a public park, something like that. And therefore uh, it would be a pre-existing non-conforming use. I think if the board has a consensus uh, uh, on that point, the board could so indicate. And then secondly, if the board feels that that is the case, then uh, it does a uh, private school constitute a, a continuation uh, substantial continuation of that school use and the board could vote on that. I, I would expect that to know the answers to those questions, frankly. Right. And, and uh, going by Mr. Hefley's uh, brief and by uh, Mr. Haggerty's uh, interpretation, uh, I personally, I think that it is a continuation of the use. So yes. I, Personally, I think that it is a, uh, a pre-existing non-conforming use and we can, uh, you know, we can vote on that part first. Yes. And then go on to uh, Mr. Hefley's presentation. I think so, Mr. Chairman, I think that's correct. I mean, we're still prepared, obviously. We have a whole site plan application here to, to, to show you in the modifications and that we've made to address the concerns of the board. But in right. terms of the prior non-conforming existing use, I mean, I spent you know three pages in my uh, in my letter explaining why legally we are a uh, continuing uh, non-conforming use, and and I don't think there's any question that 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 school is that. And the school sitting vacant clearly under the case law, two years sitting vacant means absolutely nothing because nobody changed the use whatsoever. So it is definitely continuing, and we didn't abandon it in any way. So. What I would say to you is, I, I think it is abundantly, abundantly clear that we are a continuing non-conforming use. But more importantly, I wanted the board to recognize that doesn't change the fact that we're going to deal with this board in a, in a, in a very, you know, um, affirmative and agreeable fashion in terms of what you are looking for in your commentary. This is obviously an important piece of property in a pivotal location in the municipality, and we intend to address all of the board's concerns. This issue is really a housekeeping issue, and, uh, and, and I think that under the facts and the law, this school that's been there for 111 years, there's no question. It was a school, it's been a school, and it's going to be a school. So I don't know that we need to get too busy with that. Um, that's Let just... the board vote, Mr. Heffley. Okay, all right, good enough. Yeah, we, we, have, we have Mr. Heffley's brief. We have the opinion of uh, Mr. Haggerty. Uh, and I, I think what we need to do is first decide whether or not this is a pre-existing non-conforming use. I would make the motion that we, that we accept this application as a pre-existing non-conforming application. Okay. I'll second it. Before, before we go forward, let me open it to the public and see if the public has any comments or any questions about this. So if anybody from the public has any comments, questions, anything that, at all that they want to say about this, please go to the bottom of your screen and in reactions, raise your hand. We're dealing only with the pre-existing non-conforming use of this property. I'll wait for a minute with, as Mr. Tappan and I look over the screen. Mara, Mara Modes, go ahead. 
please raise your right hand and be sworn in by Mr. Haggerty. You swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Um, I, I was under the impression that the school was deed restricted to be a school up until they put it into the redevelopment zone. So wouldn't that change the time limit of it being abandoned as a school or is it wrong? No. Uh, <laughs> I don't, what? I don't think. It, it, it was still deed restricted as a school. So it's still a school. Right. Right. Private or otherwise, it's it's a school. The property is not in the redevelopment zone. The school, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I confirmed that with the municipality. Uh, they were thinking about putting it into the redevelopment zone, but they wanted to see what the ultimate use would be and then decide that. So the ordinance placing the school itself into the redevelopment zone was never adopted. Oh. Okay. I. Thought uh, it was. It was. It, it was. That's, that's Bill, the, there's no there's no ordinance putting the school into the redevelopment zone. I confirmed it with your zoning officer. Huh? It, it, and, and the reason is it was on the plate, it was on the table, and it was being considered. However, it was they, they held off on that. The council held off on that for the simple reason they wanted to see who was going to come in and develop it, and the ordinance was never adopted. And, and Mr. Donican confirmed that for me. Okay. I don't think it's going to be material one way or the other. Okay, Mara, are you done? Yeah, that was my question. Okay. Thank Does you. Anybody else have a question or comment about this application? Anybody else? Mr. Tappan and I will look over the screen and see if any we see any other hands up. I don't see any. Do you, Ron? Nope, then I'll bring it back to the board. Uh, we have a motion and a second, and the motion is to accept the use of the school as a pre-existing non-conforming use going forward by the academy. Alan, I missed who seconded it. I got it was Ron who made the motion. Okay, who seconded that? Uh, I did. John, okay. Mr. Bon Giovanni? Yes. Mr. Gaffney? Yes. Mrs. Croft? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith? You're muted. Yes, sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> Mr. Tappan? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes, based upon the opinion of Mr. Haggerty. It would be up to Mr. Heffley at this point to uh, present uh, testimony in regard to changes that were made to the plan in regard uh, concerning issues raised by uh, the board at the last presentation, and also to confirm that there would be no intensification of that pre-existing non-conforming use so that all we would be dealing with in that case would be uh, site plan approval and both variances, but not, not a D variance. Thank, thank you, Mr. Haggerty. Thank you, Chairman. Um, let, let, yeah, let's let's just Chairman. remind remind everybody uh, who's going to be, well, let, let's get everybody re-sworn in, if we could, Mr. Heffley. Sure. Uh, Mr. Um, Heffley doesn't have to be sworn in, but Mr. Fox does, Mr. Hughes does, Mr. Uh, Yi, uh, anybody else who's going to testify? Um, that's correct. Uh, and uh, John, John McDonough. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. See, Mr. Fox. Uh, uh, everybody else there? I'm not sure. I can. I can only see Mr. Yes. Fox. Mr. Fox, please raise your right hand. Do you swear the test? And everyone else is going to testify. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And my licenses are still First current. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Okay. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Heffley. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so again, we yeah we last appeared before the board at the April meeting, and um, uh, we at that point provided testimony from Mr. Kwan with regard to the uh, the operations. 
uh, and how the school was going to function. We did provide architectural testimony from Mr. Fox, traffic testimony from Mr. Hughes, and, and planning testimony from uh, Mr. McDonough. And uh, although we had no uh, public opposition to our application, the board did have a number of concerns with regard to the application. And, and mostly those concerns centered around the appearance of the facility and uh, the traffic and parking um, uh, variants that we were uh, requesting at the time. Um, so we agreed we would address those concerns in terms of modifications to the application. And we uh, made those uh, application changes and modifications to the plans. And we resubmitted a new set of plans. And um, so the professionals are gonna to testify to all of those specific changes, but uh, just a, in a general sense, we did add additional parking to the uh, application and uh, changed uh, the flow. And there are no longer any parking variances required. Parking now complies. And we also made some substantial changes to the architecture of the building. We ar architecturally upgraded it and we added signage upgrades. Uh, we upgraded the walkways, the handicap ramps. We upgraded the lighting. We added lighting accents to the building. We added architectural accents to the building. We also, I think notably, we removed some impervious coverage to address the Lake Apacron Commission concerns. So we actually have less coverage than is existing now. And we added substantial landscaping also uh, to the plans and uh, improvements to that lower parking lot. So we basically went back to the drawing board. We listened to what the board had to say in terms of its concerns of the the property and its location in as part of being next door to the redevelopment zone and obviously all the construction that's going on down there. We basically gave the project an entire uh, appearance facelift upgrade in terms of uh, functionality and the uh, ultimate look for the area. So that's, that's where we are right now. And so what I'd like to do is start with Ken Fox and um, and uh, go through some of these changes so the board can see what we all did. Okay. Yes, and can I share my screen? Sure. Yes. And uh, can you see, can you see my yes. screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah, uh, yes, as Mr. Hepley, um, mentioned, we listened to the board. Uh, I know the board had concerns about, uh, um, there was words dilapidated, but uh, we don't think, didn't think it was that, but uh, we mentioned uh, that we were gonna do some improvements and the board had concern that uh, the, with the redevelopment zone adjacent to this and the upgrading of a section of a pack on that, that we were leaving this, this building behind. So we went back, we went to the drawing board and, uh, and looked at the building itself and also the property to work on a number of upgrades. Mr. Heffley gave that outline. The drawing that I have uh, in front of you um, is as submitted. Uh, it is the uh, sheet six. It's the ele elevations of that. And that shows the improvements. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to I'd like to enter an, ex an exhibit, um, a rendering that we had uh, made uh, for the school. And so I'm not sure, Mr. Heffley, uh, what number what number this would be? Did we have any last time? Um, yeah, um, that's a good question. Hold on a second, and I'll give you the answer. Um, um, so. Um, I, I think I don't have it. It just may be. Well, I can, I can, I could, I could just I, label. I don't see that you marked any exhibits. Mr. I know, right. You don't, Bill, you don't have anything either, right? No. no okay. So this is A1. So the, I'm going to mark this A1 with today's date. Yes. Um, and then subsequent to the hearing, I'll make sure that this, uh, this gets to the, uh, secretary. So this, uh, is, this is a rendering. This is a this is a professional this is a rendering of the uh, building. It's uh, generated uh, from a from a photograph that we uh, that I personally took across the street, and the renderer used that to uh, show the existing uh, site with uh, with the improvements. Um, 
I'll zoom in a little bit to show, show go, to go through a significant amount of the improvements. But as, as you can see uh, here, um, that the building is not just monochrome and uh, and and so, and has deterioration, but we've uh, made uh, significant significant improvements. Now, I'm going to go over the uh, build building change building changes first, and, I'm, and rather than using the elevations that were submitted, I'll, I'll use this re use the rendering uh, to talk about uh, the building upgrades. And so, um, what the first one that we did is. Along the entire along the entire top of the, uh, the along the entire top of the uh, front front side facade, we added a coping or a, a, a decoration tr trim up there to uh, just to give it a much better better look. I've done this on other buildings. It just it really helps the look. Presently, there's uh, presently there's just a alum aluminum coping from the roofing. So we uh, added some significant trim trim on there. Um, we're, we're proposing uh, some window changes. Uh, in last testimony, I talked about all or some or some, the w windows. We've uh, since then inspected, uh, inspected the windows um, throughout and realized that the windows themselves uh, were replaced a number of years ago, and they are mostly in uh, very good condition. Uh, there will be four windows that will that we will replace. Uh, they're the four to the left of the uh, of the, the faculty entrance. Uh, and my cursor here behind this colorful tree, colorful tree, and I'm not really good at landscape, so I can't tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. Dogwood or stogwood or something. Uh, but the four four uh, there uh, for whatever reason had not been changed, and we're going to up uh, change and upgrade those windows. Uh, with the windows themselves, uh, we are uh, painting uh, any any of the. Uh, sol solid panels and uh, adding trim on a uh, portion portion of the windows. And again, it's, sh it's shown on the specifically on our uh, elevations so that we've uh, really just made that made that uh, pop much better at the two at the two entrances. We have uh, at the uh, entrance that we, we call I'll call, call the faculty entrance, but the uh, public entrance on the right right entrance right side entrance um, we have taken the roof off re rebuilt the roof with overhang provided provided some downlighting uh, we have uh, provided stone stone accent to moder modernize and em embellish that uh, entrance entryway on the left side of the building this left portion which was an addition uh, uh, to the original school uh, that has now uh, a block on it. So we've now stuccoed this entire, this entire area uh, to, so that it matches and blends with the rest of the building and does not have that, that look. And at the entrance, we have added a roof covering, a, a more contemporary roof covering with cables and some down lights uh, at that location. Um, we have, we have added uh, some colored bands, uh, metal bands that are uh, vertical in another place where we have columns, which provide some uh, ar architectural accent. You can see that we've done that uh, through, throughout uh, on the front facade on any of the vertical, uh, any other vertical columns. Um, and uh, that for the to the build building itself, that's the uh, that's the significant. Uh, oh, and and then on the left, I'm sorry, on the left side where we had the, the new stucco, we've also provided a stone, a new stone base uh, again to have it match the stone we put over in the other entrance and have a little bit more contemporary look as was suggested by the board. We looked at some of the other new, new buildings that are in town and some of the, some of the uh, elements that they, they're using and tried to say we're gonna upgrade, uh, to try to upgrade our building uh, substantially as well. Uh, we have, I'm going to put this, I'm gonna put this aside for a moment. You suck. And I'm going to bring up the uh, <clears throat> site site plan uh, that was submitted to the board. It is labeled uh, Z1, sheet one of six, and this is a site plan. And this also has uh, de de denoted, delineated a significant number of uh, 
changes. Uh, first change is, excuse me. First change is on the uh, area here where we have parking. Uh, we have parking previously. We had two space, two spaces there, two handicap spaces uh, shown, and that was because that, that uh, that's what they had uh, had there before. Uh, we realized that one, the ease of backing up from those spaces wasn't uh, so good, and we did have a parking variance before the board. Of, uh, we were short uh, two spaces, so we we changed the configuration of this area. This area. Uh, added the two handicap spaces as we had before and added two additional parking spaces. That, that in order to add those parking spaces, it requires a little uh, retaining wall. It's about the retaining portion is about two, is about two feet high. And then it comes up to provide a curb. Um, and I'll, re I'll, refer, uh, I'll refer to the uh, rendering refer to the rendering over here on the right hand side uh, that we have the we have the wall that extends above the pave above the pavement uh, to provide a, a bumper from the, for the cars up above and that that's that retaining wall we're, we're utilizing to take the sign the sign that was previously in that location and place a sign on the retaining wall uh, a new sign uh, which, but, but it's the same size, same size, same configuration as the sign that was uh, there previously. Uh, I to have try a question clean about those parking spots. Was uh, that? Yes. I have a question about those parking sure. spots. Uh, is there sufficient room to uh, for egress and e and uh, to get in and out of those spots uh, easily? Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I would yeah. defer to Dan to uh, to tell me about that. Well, I'll, I'll answer. I'll answer and leave it to the engineer. Sure, uh, Mr. Fox, you can start. I'll go ahead. Yeah. So, well, uh, yes, we understand that it, it does require a full K turn, but we have uh, we have uh, greater than twenty four feet. Uh, well, we have. I'm sorry, we have about twenty four feet uh, of the aisle uh, aisle width here, so that backing out here is like walk is like parking, doing it in a parking lot uh, for the handicap spaces to come back. The spaces that face front there's additional space here it would take a, a, a double k turn to uh manipulate those 180 degrees uh but it, it is a they're able to do it safely um dan uh yeah i would agree i i do also uh understand the chairman's concern it it it, it isn't an, an easy maneuver i think if all if all spaces are are occupied uh, especially the the spaces facing uh, Lakeside Boulevard to be able to back out of there uh, would require a, f a couple of different maneuvers, as you've stated, um, but it does look to be accessible. Okay. Yes, and the, the parking that was up there previously um, was in the same configuration as the uh, uh, as the two spaces here, but we pushed we pushed them forward to give them more more space behind to back up. Uh, previously, uh, the corner of the building uh, came into play, so uh, these these are not these are going to be utilized by um, administration staff. Be, there will be people here that use those two spaces uh, that would be here every day and familiar familiar with the uh, fit the space as opposed to a public parking lot where uh, strangers will be parking there. So, uh, yes, it's not a, it's, it's not a perfect conventional uh, turnaround. There is a double K turn, but it uh, it is safe and it is it is possible. Okay, thank you. Um, and in, in the in that location uh, that we did this extension, we did uh, remove a large dead a large dead tree that was there. Uh, we we. We listened to the board again. We looked at the looked at the looked at the landscaping that was there, and um, so we decided we decided that uh, as far as the trees are concerned, there were three large there are three large trees uh, in the front. There were four large trees in the front, um, and we removed the one uh, dead one that was in this area, and we removed uh, some of the brush and such that was over on the on the. Uh, other street side over here as well to clean up that that exist that existing uh, grading. Um, I'll move on to from from the parking area. There has always been, there has been an asphalt 
wide paved area from this handicapped space across the front of the building, down a slope uh, when you pass this entrance, down a slope and, and to the uh, <clears throat> student entrance at, the, at, at, this, at this end of the building. Uh, what we have done there is uh, adjusted the slope of the, 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 of the sloped area. So we're gonna have to make that a little bit shallower. It was, uh, it was fairly close to handicap uh, proportions, but not exact. So we en enlarged that and put a flat spot in the middle. It was previously uh, 43 feet long for a 48 foot uh, different change in elevation. Realize that the entrance he here is like a bi-level, right? The entrance here comes in uh, with stairs to both the upper and lower area. The entrance on the uh, left side, that comes in on the lower, that comes in on the lower level and it uh, is accessible to the uh, elevator. And that is gonna be used as a student, student access. So we've, uh, we've up changed that, uh, the slope in that area. We have narrowed the asphalt. We're removing a significant amount of the asphalt along this area um, to reduce uh, impervious coverage. So we've made that, uh, got rid of that additional impervious coverage that we didn't need. Uh, we had considered uh, putting some landscaping up against the building, uh, up against the building in here, but and, and looking at how the water flow, water existing water flows there, and it is paved up to the building. Um, and there's a planter, uh, there's a planter up on this right hand side uh, that actually encourages water to come into the building. So we've left the, we've gotten rid of that planter uh, that was that was here in the right hand side and made that uh, asphalt go directly to the building. And again, that's, that was to take the existing drainage um, and keep it moving away from the building, but by eliminating significant amount of impervious coverage, which uh, overall, when you take that, that, which we added for some parking and all that that we took off of here, we have a decrease in, imperv in, in the impervious parking, this impervious pavement. Uh, our Handicap accessibility is all from from the uh, parking spaces across the front. There's also an existing uh, existing handicap ramp that uh, constructed from the drop off area. Uh, it's a slope up. It does have does have landings. Um, it, it, it measured it's it, 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 it is 100% conforming or it's very very close in, in its uh, uh, steepness. Uh, took measurements there. It has handrails and uh, it's going to get a little bit of upgrade where there's some damage, but uh, we have the full handicap, handicap accessible. Um, oh, and in the, uh, on the um, two part, on the parking space we added, we also added um, what's now required by, by the state on uh, new site plan applications. We included a new EV space. So we have a do have a charger uh, located at one, of the, uh, at one of the parking spaces in the front. Uh, so we conform uh, with that new state law. Um, and it actually uh, it increases, our, increases our proposed parking by another, another space. Um, so. We have in the in the rear in the rear of the building uh, presently the uh, well, presently as the school was operated any of the garbage or dumpster and that was just uh, precariously put uh, in the in the back uh, asphalt area so we have uh, constructed we constructed a uh, dumpster enclosure to uh, make that neater and neater and cleaner and more more in compliance with your requirements in, in the uh, in the ordinance, and that's, that's in order to put dumpster and recycling uh, in there. Uh, on the in the low, lower parking lower parking lot, uh, we were repaving, repave, repave it, repairing the pavement, uh, restriping it uh, how how it was previously. But we're cha we're changing it. I think it's how it was used, but with with appropriate signage and arrows, so that it is a one one way uh, at this time. Uh, so it will become in uh, towards the traffic light. This way, this way, it always exits farther away farther away from the uh, farther away from the traffic light. Uh, it's, it's just it's the, just the right way to use uh, these this ingress and egress. And again, we've provided the stop sign, uh, the do not enter sign. And the uh, entrance entrance only signage uh, at at that look at the location. Uh, there are some uh, timber timber landscape walls um, up here. I think there are only 
about a foot and a half, foot and a half high. And we are uh, repairing and repaint, repainting uh, those timber walls there. And I'll get into landscaping. And uh, also at the drop off area, there's a, a timber wall along this, a retain, retaining wall along this entire drop off area. Um, and, and we are repairing, repairing and repainting uh, that whole wall to uh, upgrade that. Um, we did provide on our detail sheet, we did provide new details for the pavement, for the grass restoration, uh, traffic signs and trash enclosure. We also added, uh, added landscaping. Uh, previously, we just showed our existing, okay, so this moves very slowly. Um, we did a landscape plan. So we submitted a landscape plan. So we, uh, we, we again, we removed the dead, the dead tree at the corner. We added some uh, bushes and landscaping. We have the plant schedule with all of those called out along the handicap ramp uh, up, up on the top, along the, along the uh, top of the wall down, down below. We have those three large, we have those three large trees that are up, uh, up, up in this area. In the lower parking lot, re-landscaping that incline that uh, is uh, adjacent to the parking lot. So we provide additional landscaping there. And we tried to show, uh, show a significant amount of that landscaping as much as good as we could uh, in the rendering, which I'm showing now, A1. Uh, in the rendering, and we show here the improved landscaping, uh, the, the, the low wall, the, uh, the shrubbery, and, uh, and the tr existing trees that all uh, do remain there. Um, we, also, uh, we also provided the, some up lighting. We show those uh, ground, mount, ground mount mounted uh, front facade lighting. Uh, in the front of the building to be able to ac accent that building. Um, and we have, I've also have, what I'd like to enter as exhibit A2 is a rendering of the uh, building. Well, the lighting is not exactly how it's gonna be. I think the lighting's gonna be a little better. It does show the location of the up lighting. Um, the lighting itself, the beams, the, the lights that we've selected there have a bit wider spread than, than, than a wider spread than shown on this, uh, uh, on this exhibit, exhibit A2, but it does give, uh, give the uh, impression of, of how we've uh, just, uh, you know, tried to embellish the building, make it more modern and uh, call, attention, call attention to all that, all that detail. Uh, I did, in the mentioning lighting, we did provide uh, some, we did provide, some, provide uh, building mounted lighting along the walkway in the front provide a safe, safe walkway that would be down lighting so that it's not uh, so that it's not uh, mm -hmm. seen, seen off, off site. And I was just looking for that rendering again. It's, it's difficult to see in the, difficult to see in the rendering, but uh, that I think, I believe that that is the, Oh, and just to call attention on the rendering, we show we show these the lamps in the street uh, and the traffic lights. They they are actually pre presently, or at least a week or two two weeks ago, uh, this intersection is getting uh, rebuilt, and so uh, the the lights are existing lights on the municipal street. So uh, we, we showed we showed uh, showed those in the rendering, and the the traffic lights are actually reconfigured. When we took when I took the photograph, there's multiple traffic lights because they're of the uh, uh, construction that's going on there. But uh, we've tried to make, make the rendering depict, uh, depict how uh, we've made this up, upgrades as uh, we think the board requested. And that's uh, the extent of our upgrades. Okay, has, has any consideration been given to the uh, metal uh, handrails that are all over the place uh, going mm -hmm. up the stairs as well as going around the building uh, the fact that they're deteriorating considerably. Uh, yes, we're gonna. We are. I think I put that on the plan, um, but uh, and that could be a condition. We there, there, there are parts of them that are deteriorating. There's none of the whole ones. I, I, as an example, on the lower parking lot, um, I think on the top of one top end of one of them, uh, part of the bottom was out, and there was a little there was damage. 
uh, and then also going up the handicap ramp. There's some, some damage on a few places, but generally speaking, they're in, they're all in pretty good shape. So we are going to repair them um, and paint where necessary. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else have questions for uh, Mr. Fox? Any board members have questions for Mr. Fox? Okay, then Mr. Heffley, we're back to you. Okay, um, I, I'd like to uh, put our traffic expert back on just to go through the traffic and uh, what we modified uh, in terms of the parking, the fact that we have no variances and we are going to be utilizing the two-way traffic um, uh, that, that's designed there now. And so I'd just like to put him on briefly because we did remove those variances and I just want him to go through those modifications. So that's uh, Mr. Uh, uh, okay, that's, uh, Mr. Hughes, right? Yes. Yeah. Hughes, please raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. And you're still licensed, obviously, as a traffic engineer, correct? Yes, I am still current. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so Mr. Hughes, let's uh, let's uh, outline for the board what we have now and uh, why the made the made the changes we made why they're um, why they're appropriate and correct and uh, the, the safety of the site at this point. Certainly. Um, so yeah, since we were last here before the board, um, again, you know, as we kind of went through, we re ramped not only the physical features of the property in the existing building, um, but also we have gone through and um, look, re looked at the operations. Um, and the first part of that is we reduced uh, the number of the student body. We previously went in with 170 that we were proposing. We are now have reduced that to 120. Um, so we reduced that up to 50 students. Um, and just for a point of reference, the former elementary school had, I believe, 260 students. Um, so now we are less than half of what this pre the elementary school student body um, had operated at. And we also reduced the number of staff that we were projecting from previously it was 25, uh, now it's 22. Um, that's part of, that's the reason why we are no longer requiring a parking variance. Um, whereas 33 are required, we are providing 37 uh, between the parking lot, as well as those four spaces on the actual school property. Um, and again, as Mr. Byrne um, testified to as well, we are analyzing Lakeside Boulevard as a two-way roadway. Um, we took out the one-way configuration. We reanalyzed that and found that the levels of service at the intersections uh, still remain unchanged from the no-build conditions without the school. Um, so still the fact remains that with and without the projected school traffic, uh, the operations would be uh, noticeably the same as they are today. Um, and also, as Mr. Fox testified to at the parking lot, we're configuring that as a one-way circulation in a counterclockwise direction with ingress from the uh, southerly driveway, egress only at the, at the uh, northerly driveway, appropriately located farthest point from the traffic signal. Um, so that will now operate in a more efficient manner. Um, and we also are going to utilize that curb cut out along Lakeside Boulevard for the primary um, drop off and pickup area. Um, and just on a little, for a little more detail on that, um, as far as the traffic demands for the drop off and pickup, the, we are staggering those drop off and pickup periods in order to alleviate any instantaneous demands um, for those operations. So with the 120 students, we're staggering that into uh, two periods of 60 students each. So there will be no more than 60 students arriving at a single time. Um, and we also are providing bus service, which will account for two thirds of the students um, for each of those periods. Uh, so that will accommodate <clears throat> 40 of those students. So that leaves only 20 students, theoretically that would be commuting there via a uh, passenger car. Um, so at most you would only have 20 vehicles arriving uh, or leaving at the same time associated with the students and likely less as well because you have you know some students in the same family so you have some carpooling that's involved um, so really that level of, of traffic generation that the 20 um, students arriving via passenger vehicle as well as the bus um, is 
an insignificant amount with regards to ITE and um, New Jersey Department of Transportation thresholds. Um, and then again, in the afternoon, we are providing uh, aftercare services, which will alleviate um, those pickup demands as well. Um, <clears throat> so really overall, you know, I, I feel that we have a, a good and efficient uh, operational plan in place um, in order to make sure that, you know, the pickup and dropout process will be as efficient as possible. Um, there will be staff stations at multiple locations, namely the that drop off curb cut out, um, as well as facilitating students across the crosswalk if needed, um, as well as in that lower parking area in order to facilitate um, those drop offs and pickups. Um, and I think that pretty much covers all of our changes. Um, so again, you know, in summary, we reduced from 170 to 120 to help with those demands. Um, traffic operations on the surrounding roadways uh, will noticeably be the same and, and certainly less than what was there with the elementary school um, and the drop off, drop off and pickup process. Uh, you know, we have a, a plan in place to, to allow those. Okay, thank you. Okay, Can I have a couple of questions. Go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you said it different twice. The first time you said 150, and then just now you just said 170 and you're taking it down to 120. So you guys uh, comfortable with 120 max throughout? That's forever? correct. Yes, that's correct. And mandating bus service, that means you're gonna somehow mandate 80, 80 students to be uh, picked up and dropped off every day? How do you mandate that? No, I, let me let me address that. So the um, the upper level students, uh, the um, uh, nine through twelve students that will be uh, at arriving by bus from the dormitory, they uh, they they will be bust bust in, and 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 that's like we said, there are going to be two times that the students are delivered. Right, it's staggered timing. So we would have 60 students arriving uh, at any one point in time, and it's a half hour time interval during which they arrive. So you have 60 students arriving during a half hour interval, 40 of which are gonna be coming by bus. And so there's only about 20 students or so that would actually come by car. So of the, of the 120, we'd be broken into two groups of 60 each, staggered a half hour apart, and of those 60, 40 come by bus. So it's not a lot of busing compared to what was actually there before. Um, and and uh, the, the students that are be coming from the dormitory are also going to be coming in, in the mini buses, the smaller buses. Um, and I can, I can also report to the board that we did get the dormitory uh, approval uh, in Byron Township at 85 Tamarack Road a couple of weeks ago. So our housing is now uh, solidified for the upper level students. We did get board approval over in Byron. So that issue uh, is also behind us. Okay. Walt, do you have any other questions? Uh, no, sir. Okay, anybody else? Uh, I do, I, Chairman. Um, go ahead. This being a, a school that is going to have an emphasis on music, um, will there be concerts when the parents will be, um, or relatives will be invited to um, attend? Yeah, yes, yeah. Right. We, 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 we had some testimony to that, Mr. Smith, at the last meeting. Um, so uh, there, there may very well be that. Um, and we did have actually some requests from um, the town in terms of concerts being, uh, being um, performed at the, at the um, Hudson Maxim Park uh, in the music shed there and some requests for uh, perhaps an expansion of that music shed all of which those ideas and, and those requests we're entertaining right now. So there will be concerts is the, is the answer, yes. Will there be any, uh, Mr. Heffley, at the school itself? Yes. And how will he handle the parking with that overflow of parents and relatives coming to the concert? Yeah, it's gonna be handled the same way that it was handled by the Hudson Maxim School. They had events there also, and there is parking uh, along that street. Uh, also the street, remember the name now that runs down to the church and uh, quite frankly what happened, was it 
branch, I believe. Branch, yeah. Okay. So there's, there is a, a quite a bit of parking up and down that street and it is allowed. Street parking is allowed there. And that's where that overflow would go. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else from the board? Okay, back to you, Mr. Hefley. Okay, um, well, uh, I don't think that I need any additional testimony from my planner, so I'm going to pass on him, and I, that's really the extent of our application and our modifications, and, and I would note that uh, based upon the changes that we've made, uh, all of the variances have been eliminated from this application. The only variances that are left are prior non-conforming uh, use, uh, prior non-conforming variances, but the applicant is, has no uh, new variances here. And quite frankly, he's actually reduced the impervious coverage. So he's, he's uh, improved one of the non-conforming previous variances that exist also. So I, I think uh, in sum, in terms of a site plan application, which is what we're looking at right now, the applicant's done, um, done uh, a nice job in terms of rehabilitating the school and making it look nice. He wants it to obviously fit into the neighborhood. I think that in terms of a site plan without variances and the modifications and upgrades, you know, it's a it's an abundantly approvable application, and uh, and we would request same. Thank you, Mr. Hefley. Anybody from the board have additional comments or questions? If not, I will open it to the public. Um, question here from the engineer. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. Uh, with respect to uh, overflow parking, um, you mentioned that the prior school, when there was uh, um, gatherings and, and concerts, there was plenty of parking along the street. Um, the street has since changed from a one-way street to a two-way street. Uh, is, that, uh, is, is that still the case as far as being having the room along the... Has that been looked at by the traffic engineer regarding having the space to park parallel parking along the side of the road now that the road has changed? Well, I, I'm gonna leave it to the traffic expert, but the road hasn't changed. It's the, the place where the road has changed, that is right in front of the school. Where I'm talking about the parking along the street is down down Lakeside Boulevard and down and down Branch Street. And, um, and again, you know, Hudson Maxim had 260 students there when they were having facilities and, and concerts and using it for additional um, activities. And, and we have less than half of that. So Hudson Maxim was able to park uh, its patrons that came for these events along the street. And we, we have less than half of that number. So if it worked for Hudson Maxim, there's no reason that it shouldn't work for us. Well, except, except that we're talking about uh, better performances, uh, more upscale performances by high school students, and you might get uh, more crowd. And, and uh, I'll just add, we, we also have a number of, uh, on the high school, a number of international students that, um, that more than likely are not going to have significant numbers of family members being able to attend. Uh, they may have some host families and such, but uh, I, I think that the balance is that we we do have a significantly less um, attendance at, 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 at this school. Right, and it would also be known, you know, the events would be known ahead of time. So that could be coordinated with the staff to ensure that, you know, things would operate smoothly in that, in that fashion. I've got, I've got another question, uh, Mr. Heffley. The um, playground that is to the left side, what's going to happen with that? Is that an area that should be uh, reused as parking if necessary, or is that playground going to be used as a playground being that it's a high school? I, I'll, I'll, com I'll com comment on that. And uh, it's going to be, it's going to remain, a, it's going to be remain as a playground. Um, it's essentially all paved uh, playground. And there's no vehicular access. There's no vehicular access uh, to that area, uh, so we couldn't. We could not make it into an additional parking. The, the they did have asphalt across the whole front of the building, and I would suggest that I guess you could have put cars through there. There was no no conforming driveways, uh, mm -hmm. but we have changed that. Put some handrails for a handicap uh, on there, so there's no ability to have uh, to utilize that for parking. 
Okay. Anything uh, else from the board? Uh, Mr. B. Gilbert, I would like to, I don't want to make this an argument, but <clears throat> there is an ordinance and a resolution that did put maximum uh, in the redevelopment area. And I think that's important for them to understand that so that any improvement on that property could be eligible for that redevelopment area stuff. I can show my screen on the ordinances that approved it and the resolutions that approved it from the land use board. Uh, what about the uh, borough council? Did they, did they? Uh, absolutely. Ordinance number. Okay. Ordinance number 2020-62 specifically put Maxim Glenn uh, in the redevelopment area. Thank you. Maxim Hudson. Yeah, it's at block 30, 36, uh, 30612, lot one, shown on the official map of the borough, and that's on resolution 2020-62. So, uh, Mr. Tappan, it's Bernd Heffley. Um, I, um, I got my information from, um, from Mr. Donegan, but let, I, can, I can tell you what the confusion is. Everybody's right here. You're right, I'm right, Mr. Donegan's right. And the reason is what's in the redevelopment zone is the lower parking lot. That's a different lot and block than the school is in. The school is actually, that lot and block is not in the redevelopment zone. And the lower parking lot, I, I don't know how this happened or why it happened, but the lower parking lot ends up in the redevelopment zone and the school does not. So the ordinance that you're referencing in the lot and block and the fact that it's in the redevelopment zone, you're absolutely correct. But the school itself, which is lot two, is not in the redevelopment zone and there's no ordinance for that. And I, I, Mr. Donegan, I think is on the call here. So I, I would ask him to jump in. Bill? Yes, um, when I made that statement, I was, I was not under the impression that it had been included. I was under the impression that, that once, once the bidding had been accepted uh, and knowing what the use was going to be, that it, it potentially could be tailored in that direction. Um, it, I do not believe it was in the original um, redevelopment plan, uh, you know, with the overlay zone. In, involved, and I could be mistaken. And Mr. Hefley, the, the reason that the parking lot got in there uh, is probably because we were going to use that parking lot as municipal parking when it's not being used by the schools. Right. I, you know what? I think that's absolutely correct because that that uh, condition is still part of that piece of property, and no. and, and, that, and that still carries through. So I think that that you're probably right, Mr. Chairman. That's exactly why that is. Now, with regard to the school itself, we would most certainly be more than welcome, uh, would more than welcome an opportunity to be placed in the redevelopment zone. So, um, but that's not for tonight. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, I will open it to the public then. If anybody from the public would like to comment or question this application, please go to the bottom of your screen and in reactions, raise your hand. We'll wait for a moment as Ron and I look over the screen. I don't see anybody raising the hand. Yes, you have one. Uh, Mara. Mara, you wanna raise your hand and uh, be sworn in again, please. Do you swear the Again? testimony? Yeah, yes. Do you swear the testimony okay. about to give up the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Um, it was a little hard to see. Um, first of all, I think it looks really good. But the lights that are shining towards, it looks like they're shining towards the building. And mm -hmm. I was wondering yeah, if they're right. doing something at night, would that be a problem with them shining in the windows? Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's, that's just a rendering, Mara. Uh, as he, as the testimony, okay. uh, as Mr. Fox testified, uh, the lights that they decided upon have a wider uh, span than the ones that are in the rendering. And hopefully the, oh. they wouldn't uh, shun in the windows. And if they did, you just uh, close the shades. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of got cut out in the middle there, so I wasn't. Okay. I just looked at the rendering. 
-hmm. And the second thing is, are, are they going to be starting in September? Do we know? We don't know. They, they would hope to start in September, but uh, we have to get through this process first. <laughs> well, I think it looks good from what I saw, and um, let's hope for the best. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much, Mara. Anybody else? Would anybody else from the public like to comment or question this application? If so, please go to the reactions at the bottom of your screen and raise your hand. Ron, do you see anyone? Nor do I. Okay, I Mr. will bring it back. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. one, one question, just uh, as, a, as a new guy on the board here. Uh, sure. Mr. Hefley's here representing Mr. Kwan, who's the operator. Yes. And we've got a number of uh, people that uh, represent that organization, but there's nobody here from the Princeton group. They're the ones that have the purse strings on that actually own the building. I'm just wondering, is, that, is this a norm? Uh, well, I don't know. Mr. Kwan, are you, are you also the principal of the Princeton Group? Uh, I'm not, but uh, uh, we actually lease the building from the uh, the Princeton uh, Group management, and uh, we're going to operate uh, uh, independently from them. So that's mm -hmm. why we are the applicants. So. I'm not sure what's if they have, so, I just, let me jump in for a second because I'd like to answer the question because it's a good question. So the question is, uh, obviously, the property owner is different than the applicant. And it's uh, it's incumbent upon us to provide the board with a consent from the owner to allow this applicant, the lead prep, to make the application. That's how that works. So we right. did submit a consent from the Princeton Property Management Group to allow elite prep to make the application. That's why they're not here. So if there were, like someone mentioned earlier, added considerations, you have the authorization to approve those, even if it was more costly to the owner. That's correct, because they're authorized by the owner to make this application. So well, who, they can do that. Who signed this uh, consent on behalf of Prince and Management Group? The principles of Prince yeah. Management Group. Because it looks like the same signature as we see up above from the applicant. It is. That's why I asked that question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's, that's correct. What is correct? It, it is the same same, 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 same principles is my point. Well, that's what I asked and I was told no. Mm -hmm. no. That's a part of the problem is that we don't get straight answers on anything. <laughs> that's okay. Not, that's not the case. That's not the case, Mr. Chairman. We submitted this specifically in, because the board wanted to see who the owners were. So I dug up the deed and I gave you the consent of the owner and it's been signed. We're not trying to hide anything here. As a matter of fact, we're trying to be overly transparent because of this notion that we're trying to hide something, which is just not the case. So um, I, that's why I submitted these, these, these forms and that's why I'm trying to explain the concept. But I'm going to leave it. Miss, maybe Mr. Haggerty can jump in. I mean, we have an owner's consent form here. And that's why Elite Prep can make this application. Mr. Haggerty. Oh, you, Mr. Heffley, you can just provide some indication of who it is that signed each and what their capacity uh, is with the applicant. I will be more than happy to provide that to you. And with the property owner. Yep. I can. Most if there's authorization. Okay. Yep. I can give that to you. Not a problem. Okay. All right, anybody else from the public or, or the board? What is the pleasure of the board then? Uh, well, sorry, I, 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 I see sorry, a question, I Dan. In. Yes, sorry. I'd like to just jump in with a quick co comment and a question. Uh, first comment, if this would to move forward, we would just request the applicant um, upgrade the existing signage for the crosswalk. Uh, the crosswalk from the parking lot to the school. Uh, the warning signs along Lakeside Boulevard are currently out of date and need upgrading to meet current standards for pedestrian safety uh, per DOT and per the uh, MUTCD. Uh, second question, uh, I guess, I don't know if this is for the board or for the applicant or both, uh, but uh, regarding the, the parking lot, would would is there a need for the parking lot uh, to have signage restricting uh, its use from the general public during 
certain time periods. Well, <laughs> I, I think I, I can answer part or both. And that is, yes, we, we agree that any signage or uh, striping upgrade uh, that's not completed with the uh, upgrades that are happening in the street there, we, we will uh, make them co uh, co correct. Um, and your second question, I'm sorry, was... Whether the, public, yes, that's, whether the public would be restricted. Oh, the public. And, 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 yeah, and Mr. And Mr. Heffley had brought up uh, about the own ownership. And you, you, you can answer that? No, no, that's not the question, Ken. The question is the restriction on the on the parking area during school hours. During so school the, hours. The property, the property has right now a deed restriction on it that allows the municipality to use it as public parking whenever the school is not in session uh, and whenever they're not having a, any kind of special events. So essentially, whenever the school's not using it, the public gets to use it. So I think that that's actually a good comment because nobody would know when, when, who, and who has the right to use it at what time. So I think that a sign that you know designates this as public parking anytime there's no no school parking or something of that nature uh, is absolutely you know critical both for the public and and for the school. So I think we'll, we can work that signage out with your engineer there and we'll propose, we'll propose that and, uh, and, 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 and install that also as part of those lower parking lot improvements. Okay. Anything else, Dan? Uh, is, that that the way it, uh, is that the way it does read on the deed that uh, it's only when the school is not in operation, uh, Mr. Gilbert? Yes, I believe so. The, uh, Mr. Francis, Mayor Francis uh, took care of that. Uh, Mike, are you still here? He can't, he can't speak he on can't, this. He can't speak because- uh, He can't speak I, on I, this. I can, Mr. Chairman, I can confirm, I've read that deed a number of times. I can confirm that's exactly what it says. Okay. And well, I'll, I'll, I'll send that deed in to Mr. Haggerty just so he has it. Okay. I just want to confirm one thing. I want to make sure that we're completely clear on this. The school is not in the redevelopment area, correct? It is. It is. <laughs> we'll square that away, uh, Anthony. I know you're concerned about that, and all of us are, but it is in the redevelopment area. Okay. It specifically, it specifically names it in the ordinance and in the resolution. That's an important consideration to me anyway. Um, Look, if it's in the redevelopment zone, that's better for the applicant, right? So- and Absolutely. The, and the applicant, obviously, I would hope it's in the development zone. It's just that my research and, and my conversations with the town you know, tell me otherwise. But if Mr. Tappan's correct, I'm, that's great for the applicant. And, and There is the resolution. Uh, I'm posting the resolution right there. Okay, so then, and this is this is the ordinance. Okay. Now, if there is a misconception of the block number of one or seven, but it specifically says the school. It doesn't even talk about the parking lot. Maxim, <laughs> uh, right? Maxim, Maxim school in the area of six hundred seven Cardinal, and this was done and signed and sealed. It's ordinance number 202062. Okay. I, Thank you. Look, I, we we're happy that it's in place then. Thank you, Ron. I can show, you're welcome. I can show also, hold on. This was the matter of the land use board that did the same thing for the New Hucks and Maxim School mm -hmm. and signed specifically by the Land Use Board. Right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else from the Land Use Board? Any comments, questions? I have one question, please. Go ahead, Judy. Are, are all the taxes on this property currently paid to date and the utilities like 
Absolutely. Absolutely, they are. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, well. Okay, I, I have a couple of comments, questions myself, but uh, I don't know that they're appropriate for this uh, for this venue. So I'll just skip them. What is the pleasure of the board? Does anybody want to make a motion? I'll make the motion that we move forward and uh, grant this application. I'll second and that, 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 and that would be a determination that this is not an intensification of the pre-existing non-conforming use. And the motion would be to grant site plan approval together with a variance relief for the pre-existing non-conformities. Exactly what he said. I know. Is there a second? <laughs> I'll second it. Did you get that? I'm trying to unmute. All right, I have Taylor as the second. Who was the first? That was uh, Gaffney. Okay. Mr. Bongiovanni? Yes. Mr. Gaffney? Yes. Mrs. Croc? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Tappan? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? No. Okay, uh, Mr. Heffley and Mr. Z, uh, you have uh, permission now. You thank have you. what you need. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for uh, all of the board's consideration. I know it wasn't an easy application, and uh, thank you all for hanging in there. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, go back to the agenda. Uh, that was elite preparatory uh, zoning officer. Well, Bill, do you have anything for us? Nothing this evening. Nothing at all. Discussion. Any discussion? Resolution. Andre Andre Andrachuk. Hearing date April nineteenth, two thousand twenty-two. The resolution was electronically distributed. Are there any additions or corrections to the to the resolution? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion for approval of the Andrachuk resolution, granting approval for permitting construction of a single family home on a vacant lot at 108 Unger Avenue. I'll, I'll make, make the motion. I'll second. Okay. Mr. Bongiovanni? Yes. Mr. Gaffney? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Croc, you were voted no on that, correct? I voted no. Okay, Mr. is not here. Mr. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Tappan. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Councilman Schindler, are they back? Councilman Schindler? Well, they, they, I am uh, back. Okay. Offici officially back now, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> Mayor Francis. You can't get rid of me that easy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys usually announce to me when you're back. Right, well, they, we didn't tonight. <laughs> and could, Mr. Gilbert, you also it. voted no, correct? I voted no. Okay. It was too exciting for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Correspondence. We had uh, a letter from the Lake Attack on Commission about the Pelican application, but we didn't, uh, they didn't send a representative, so. We'll just enter that as correspondence. We also had more correspondence today. Actually, our attorney had correspondence from, who was it, Mr. Gates, was it? Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and <laughs> hey. Oh, boy. So, so we'll just enter that as correspondence. OK. No escrow refund. Uh, bills, should we pay the bills? Pay the bills. Okay, Judy made a motion to pay the bills. I'll second it. Mr. Bon Giovanni? Yes. Mr. Gaffney? Yes. Mrs. Croc? Yes. 
Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Tabin? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Councilman Schindler? Yes. Mayor Francis? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Okay, I will now open the meeting to the public. Would anybody from the public like to address the board on any issues at all? If so, please go to the bottom of your screen and reactions, raise your hand. We'll wait for a moment as Ron and I peruse the screen and see if anybody wants to address the board. If you want to address the board on any item at all. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Old business. Is there any old wait, business? Wait, wait. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, Mara. Oh. Mara. Oh, Mara. Mara came in at the last minute. Yep. Mara, go, Mara, please raise your hand and be sworn in. One more time. So we don't have high speed internet. I'm just <laughs> going to make a comment. comment. Okay. So it's not a question. A comment. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I just want to. I just want to thank Mr. Chapman for looking up the ordinance because I was at both of those meetings and I thought that's what happened. So he, he justified it. So thank you, Mr. Chapman. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Any old business? Any new business? Okay, Judy. Motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. Hey, Mike. Mike.